Welcome, Ukraine war update today. Fighting heats up in east and north after tank pledges. Ukraine battled Russian troops trying to pierce its lines in the east and northeast, and artillery bombardments intensified after Western allies promised the Kyiv government it would send them tanks to repel the invaders. Kyiv said fierce battles were underway, a day after at least 11 people were killed in missile and drone strikes which were seen in Ukraine as a response to the promises by important allies to send it tanks. After weeks of wrangling, Germany and the United States this week said they would send Ukraine dozens of modern tanks to help push back Russian forces, opening the way for other countries to follow suit. Poland gave Ukraine a further boost on Friday by promising an additional 60 tanks on top of 14 German-made Leopard 2 tanks it had already pledged. A total of 321 heavy tanks have been promised to Ukraine by several countries, Ukraine's ambassador to France. Vadim Amolchenko, said on BFM television. Ukraine has also asked for US F-16 fighter jets. The White House National Security spokesperson John Kirby said the government was aware of Ukraine's request but added, we don't have any additional weapon systems to speak to today. Both sides in the war are expected to launch spring offensives, though Washington has advised Ukraine to wait until the latest weapons are in place and training has been provided a process expected to take several months. Moscow accused U.S. President Joe Biden of prolonging the war by arming Kiev. Ukraine says the only way to end the war is for allies to give it the weapons to win it. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the situation at the front remained extremely acute, particularly in the eastern Donetsk region. In a Friday evening address, Zelensky said Russian forces were not just storming Ukrainian positions but also destroying the towns and villages around them. In Bohoyevlenka village in Donetsk region, soldiers said fighting around the nearby town of Volodar had intensified, with Russian troops constantly trying to advance and capture it. Volodar had come under intense shelling in the past 24 hours, with seven buildings and two schools damaged, Yevon Nazarenko, spokesman for the Ukraine Army's 68th Brigade, told Reuters. They constantly use artillery fire, aviation, there is no single quiet minute here, he said. Thick black smoke rose over Bohoyevlenka and explosions could be heard in the background. Some homes were damaged. Ola Sinhubov, governor of the northeastern region of Kharkiv, said fierce fighting was continuing along the front lines there but Ukrainian forces were holding out. Millions of Ukrainians faced electricity shortages after Thursday's missile and drone strikes, the latest to target energy facilities and deprive people of heat, light and water. Russian air attacks hit five high-voltage substations in the central, southern and southwest regions on Thursday, Prime Minister Denis Shmihal said. Ukraine will need an additional $17 billion in financing this year for energy repairs, demining, and to rebuild infrastructure, he added. Russia has been targeting Ukraine's energy infrastructure with intense airstrikes far from the front about weekly since October. Kiev says the attacks serve no military purpose and aim to harm civilians, a war crime. Moscow says the strikes are intended to reduce Ukraine's ability to fight. The latest strikes focused on facilities that operate Ukraine's defense industrial complex and transport system, it said. The goals of the massive attack have been reached. All the assigned targets have been neutralized. After Ukraine recaptured land in the second half of 2022, front lines have been largely frozen for more than two months, with Russia trying to gain ground in the east and protect a corridor of land it has seized in southern Ukraine.